Hello, we are continuing with uh, the interactivity and in this part we'll be adding animation. So uh, let's add animation using the standard uh, way uh, of doing this in 3ds Max. So enable auto key. Let's uh, uh, just drag our uh, drawer and set the animation uh, frame for it uh, at 30 so let's just drag it so it opens and this is pretty it. the simple animation disable auto key and we'll be uh, playing this animation interactively so we want this animation to play when the user clicks on this drawer object so once again let's export gltf yes yes and refresh it so we're seeing that uh, the animation is playing back uh, the playback actually can be are modified playback options here so we can disable auto start we can change the repeat to for example once but uh, we'll be not doing it in 3ds max instead we'll be changing the behavior of our animation in puzzles so um, we can continue adding puzzles here, but uh, a more convenient way is to add another tab to the puzzles editor. Just uh, call it animation. And uh, first of all, let's just uh, disable this animation playback when the uh, application starts up so go to animation and drag out stop animation and go to selectors and drag out animation from here animation selector so we only got one animated object on the scene uh, and this is called drawer let's stop the animation click run and it is stopped okay so we want the animation to be run by the user action so the user clicks on the drawer animation uh, runs and uh, the drawer is opened so you do this by adding once again when clicked uh, the object selector is uh, for for the drawer only drawer will be interactive and we play animation so go to animation drag out play animation uh, duplicate this insert and change from auto auto means uh, it uses 3ds max settings but we decided to not change them so instead we just want the animation played once so it just opens and uh, lives in this state so let's try it play click yes so basically works so click again and it opens again but uh, this looks uh, not that natural because it jumps to the frame zero again and opens so maybe it's a simple it can work but we want it to be a bit more natural and we want it to be to have uh, some closing animation as well so we want it once we we click on it it opens and when we click again we want it to close and how can we achieve this 
with puzzles. So uh, in order for for us to and and for and for, for for the puzzle scenario to understand in which state it is now, we want to add uh, uh, some. Uh, some variable variable which is basically variable is a valued uh, which is a name and value so which will be storing our state for the drawer so let's create a variable call it um, drawer status and it immediately uh, adds three uh, standard puzzles for setting this uh, variable for incrementing it. It is will be not numeric, so it's, it's not useful for us. And for retrieving its value. So how it works? So let's initially set our drawer status to close it because it will it will start as close it and uh, let's set this status variable to the value close it so go to text drag out our first puzzle and name it close it so and uh, check this variable uh, inside this when clicked puzzle so we can check if it is in uh, the closed state so how do we check things in puzzles are uh, we are going to the logic category and drag out this uh, if puzzle and actually insert it to the when click it. So we can change now, uh, actually we can uh, check now the status for the drawer. So uh, let's go to variables, drag out the uh, puzzle for retrieving the value of our variable. So let's drag it out and uh, actually, instead of directly uh, checking this variable, we want to compare it with some value. So we want to check if this is closed. So we need to uh, add a comparison puzzle, which is also available in the logic category. Here it is. So drag it out, insert, and we'll be comparing our variable drawer status with value. So just duplicate, insert, and now we'll be comparing our status with the clause. So if, it's, if it is closed, we want the animation to play only when it is closed. So we don't want it to play when it is open. So let's uh, run. So this uh, scenario started working. So the animation is stopped and reset. The drawer status set to close it. When we click on the drawer, let's click. It opens. Uh, if we click it again, it opens again. Uh, this is because we uh, didn't change the status. So when it is opened, we want the, the status to change to open. And we didn't do this, and the scenario still believes that it is in its closed state. So we want to change the status to the open once the animation stopped playing here and to detect that the animation uh, stopped uh, playing so it finished its 
our frame range so uh, we go to uh, the play animation puzzle and configure it a bit so go to the configuration click on the configuration icon here and enable when finished slot when finished slot so just click it and now we got a slot for detecting that the animation finished playing so now we can change the status to open in this slot okay let's duplicate set drawer status to open okay so our the drawer status changed to open when it is open so it's logic uh, let's try it go to play click run again it, it is reset animation stopped the drawer status is closed check click on the drawer check if it is closed then play animation so go click click again it plays again uh, the problem is that uh, we are we've been working with this scene a lot so uh, inside the application uh, several when click it are uh, handlers actually uh, were created and they are still active so uh, if you need something strange when using uh, event puzzles uh, so for example it's not working as expected it is uh, better to refresh all the application instead of uh, constantly clicking on the run uh, button so let's save to make it persistent refresh and now check if it works so click on the drawer it opens click on the drawer again so it does not react because uh, our script forbids opening if the drawer is not closed so it only opens when the drawer is closed if the drawer is open it does not react so this is what we want okay so how do we do the opposite animation so we want it to close and we could uh, just add another uh, if uh, puzzle and uh, the comparison puzzle here but this is another way is a more compact way actually so go to the if puzzle and configure it to have another slot else if so just uh, drag out here in this small window else if and put it under the if uh, close the configuration dialog and now we can compare uh, the drawer status again so I'll just duplicate insert it to else if and compare it with open so else if the drawer status is open just like it is now we want the animation to close so let's copy play animation insert of drawer and uh, how do we play the animation in reverse so we could create an animation in 3ds max uh, for closing but instead we will be reusing the opening animation but we will just play it in reverse so I'll go to the configuration icon and enable advanced playback options so let's enable it uh, the puzzles got longer and we want to leave from and to as it is now speed leave the speed default and the only thing we want to change is to click this reverse it checkbox so 
let's click it and now when the drawer is in its open state only when it is in its open state it will play the animation reverse it so that it closes finally we want to uh, refresh the uh, actually to update the status update the status so that it's no longer open but close it this is pretty it so uh, let's save refresh uh, by the way uh, there is a useful button here the third button which allows to minimize these puzzles editor window so let's minimize it or we can restore it by clicking on the top left button here so for now let's minimize it and check how it works so go to go click on the drawer click on it yes it opens now click again it closes opens and closes so uh, this is pretty it with the uh, interactivity and we'll be doing some more things and finally publish the application online in the next part see you later